Hi, I'm Philip, and together with my colleagues Julius and Live, we've created Amber, a method for computing Boolean operations between meshes that is completely exact and highly efficient. Let's start with a little thought experiment. Suppose you carved a few logos and texts out of the surface of your choice, and then apply a large-scale destruction operation to your whole object. Zoom in, and all the details are still there, still crisp. Unfortunately, you now realize that one of the logos you've used is in the wrong version, and of course, the next team in the pipeline is already breathing down your neck and wants its geometry. What a spicy problem we have. We want to apply a large-scale Boolean operation between two complex meshes that is accurate and robust, and at the same time efficient enough that it is usable, preferably in real-time or in an interactive setting. And in this talk, I will give you an overview of how we have achieved just this. Before we start, let's see what the state of the art can already provide. First, we have volumetric booleans. They roughly work by voxelizing the input geometry to a 3D grid, then apply the boolean operation per cell, and finally they extract the resulting surface using an isosurface extraction algorithm. This inherently discretizes the input and thus loses quite a lot of accuracy, but is in general highly efficient and also uh, really robust. There are a lot of ways to make the resulting surface um, preserve some features, and there has been a lot of research in isosurface extraction over the years, but still there is a fundamental limit to accuracy due to this discretization. To achieve the accuracy we're looking for, we have to compute the booleans on the input meshes themselves. This works by resolving pairwise intersections between triangles, and then discard all the patches that do not belong to the output by some kind of classification scheme. I'll actually provide more detail on this in the rest of the talk. However, if you do this using floating point calculations, you will quickly run into numerical issues that ultimately jeopardize the robustness of the method. Still, we have some good state of the art here, for example, the really efficient quick CSG method. And this is also the approach of choice for many industry proven 3D modeling packages. If we replace the floating point calculations by some kind of exact arithmetics, we get exact mesh booleans. So basically they are the same approach as the floating point mesh booleans, but we use exact constructions or exact predicates to guarantee robustness. However, we typically use at least one or two orders of magnitude of performance here. Still, there are some great developments here in the recent years. Um, for example, the mesh arrangements based on arbitrary precision rationals or the mesh arrangements based on adaptive floating point predicates. Our method, AMBER, is also a method for exact mesh booleans. However, due to our various contributions, we can actually restore and even exceed the efficiency of the previous methods. We do that by using polygon local BSP construction for the intersection resolution, by having a segment tracing that accumulates winding numbers for classification, by using a subdivision based tactic to scale to large meshes, and finally we cast all this in a plane based geometry paradigm that allows us to give strong guarantees for exactness and robustness. Let's take a closer look on how booleans between meshes actually work. So as an input, we have a soup of polygons. And we start by resolving pairwise intersections, which means finding all intersecting triangles, and then cutting up the result so that we have a set of patches that do not intersect anymore. For these patches, we can now classify them as belonging to the result or not, and only keep those that do belong. Reassembling the result, we have the here the intersection between the two objects. Before classification, we need to split up all intersecting triangles. And there are many ways to do this. Typically, some kind of constraint Delaunay triangulation or a constraint ear clipping algorithm is used. However, as we're operating within a plane based geometry paradigm, a different approach is more natural. In particular, we construct per polygon a local binary space partitioning tree and insert intersection segments into this tree. In particular, each intersection segment splits each leaf node that it is contained within. The result is a set of leaf polygons that do not intersect other polygons anymore and only touch them at their borders. 
After cutting up all intersecting triangles, we can now start with the classification. For this, we're using the popular framework of generalized winding numbers. In our case, winding numbers are 2D vectors, a, B, where A is the number of times we're within the blue mesh, and B is the number of times that we're within the green mesh. Now, if we want to classify some patch, and we have a known reference number at some position, we can just trace an arbitrary path from the patch to our known position. Each time we're crossing the blue mesh, we accumulate 1, 0, and each time we're crossing the green mesh, we're accumulating 0, 1. And the sign of the accumulation depends on the direction of the face and the segment. We continue to do this for every patch that we got after intersecting. And this framework neatly supports all self-intersection and nested components and other more challenging cases. Now, after we've classified each um, patch, we have a winding number in front and a winding number in the back of each patch. The winding number itself can then be classified to in or out, depending on the operation that we're currently performing. And the polygons that we want to emit are exactly those that transition from in out or out in. So example, for a union operation, we only have 0, 0 considered out, everything else is considered in. And the polygons that here transition in out or out in are exactly the borders of the union operation. And then we can just change up this table, for example, uh, here for a difference operation, or finally for an intersection operation. Here only if we're inside A and B are we considered inside the output. These previous steps do not scale well with large meshes. In order to stay efficient, we employ a subdivision tactic. So if there are too many polygons, we want to split the problem into subproblems. For this, we choose an axis aligned plane and split all triangles and polygons across this plane. For the classification, we also need a reference winding number. So here we already have a re reference winding number for one subproblem and then do a single segment trace to get the second number. This results in two completely independent subproblems that, if they are too large again, can be split further until they are small enough so that the previous steps are efficient. And because we traced this local reference winding number, we have a computation that is completely local, and this is one of the big reasons why our method is so efficient. We also gain the opportunity for various optimizations here. So we have a few early out strategies that we can employ, and our parallel implementation uses a work ceiling approach based on these subtasks. To compute all these intersections and to do the segment tracing, we're working within a plane-based geometry paradigm that builds upon our previous work. So in this paradigm, the basic primitive is a plane. A plane is characterized by the four coefficients of its plane equation, and everything else is just a combination of planes. So the points that we get from intersections are not computed in 3D coordinates, but rather as the combination of three planes. If we take the intersection of two planes, we get an infinite line, and if we add two additional planes, we have a segment. If we start from an infinite plane and add a few bordering planes, we can get a representation of polygons. The only actual kind of computation that we do with these planes is, given three planes that implicitly define a point and a fourth plane, we ask on which side of this fourth plane is the point. And to answer that, we compute this 4x4 four four determinant, consisting of the plane coefficients. And depending on the sign of this determinant, we know if the point is on the positive, negative side, or if the point is exactly on the plane. And now the secret to the exactness and also efficiency of our and this previous method is that each plane coefficient is integer or fixed point. And then we perform fixed width arithmetics, which are a lot more efficient than arbitrary precision computations. And we say that we have a fixed width for the final determinant. So let's say we have 256 bit to compute the final result. We can then work backwards for all sub expressions 
and end up with 26 bit that we can use for each coordinate for our input vertices, which is quite sufficient for our practical applications. And this is really the only uh, computation that we perform, which can then be optimized in various um, scenarios. And one of these optimizations actually yields an exact construction for intersection points. As it turns out, if we take three planes, like these three, and intersect them, we can actually represent the intersection point with integer coefficients if we treat that as a 4D homogeneous coordinate vector. And each of these coordinates turns out to be a 3 by 3 subdeterminant of this 4 by 4 matrix. Let us continue with a few results. This is the introduction example where we cut up a 2.4 million triangle mesh with a 120k triangle laser grid. This on a consumer PC and a multi-thread implementation takes 87 milliseconds. This performance is actually representative. So here you see a few other experiments of meshes with varying size and different Boolean operations. We also did a large-scale performance benchmark on the Thingy10k dataset, where we compared against other methods and took a few thousand meshes between 1,000 and 100,000 faces per mesh and computed a pairwise Boolean operation between them. And here in this logarithmic scale, you see that our method is orders of magnitude faster than the previous state of the art, even faster than the inexact methods. The result of our method is a potentially cut up subset of the input triangles. So it is rather easy to transfer input attributes to the output. So here you see UV coordinates transferred over, and it is also really easy to transfer material parameters via barycentric interpolation. Our method also works with dense interactions between the objects, and we also tested various challenging configurations. And if you look into the paper, you see that actually all degenerate cases are handled properly. Let's briefly talk about future directions. Our current prototype uses 26 bit of input precision, which translates to roughly 50 nanometers of accuracy on a one meter cubed scene. This can be adjusted based on the use case, so we could use less or more bits, which increases or decreases the performance. As we're working in a plane-based geometry paradigm, we can only support flat polygonal surfaces with our current method. Efficient and exact intersections between curved surfaces is an interesting topic for future work. Still, there is a lot of untapped potential, even in our use case here, if you consider special cases like industrial simulations or interactive scenarios, where we expect that you can actually reuse a lot of the previous frame computation, and we predict that there is another order of magnitude speed up to be gained here. So, to summarize, we present Ember, a method for exact mesh booleans, and we contribute a local subdivision-based approach to mesh booleans, a polygon classification that traces segments and accumulates winding numbers, a resolution of pairwise intersections via locally constructed BSP trees, and exact arithmetics via homogeneous integer coordinates in a plane-based geometry approach. With our method, we have a strong correctness guarantee for a large class of input meshes. We have orders of magnitude speed up versus the previous state of the art. And with this, we have the ability to process millions of triangles at interactive rates. And if you're as excited as I am about this, please don't hesitate to contact us.